Hi everyone, it's uh, Mark from Coach Logic here. Today we've got Sean Thompson, who is the head of rugby, uh, director of rugby, one of the two, um, at Hampton School. And um, I guess we're just going to go through their use of the platform to help during the lockdown period. And again, just to help Sean out a bit in terms of expectation, they have only been using it for the last three weeks um, as part of the kind of free trial offering. Um, but I've been blown away by how quickly they've got up to speed. So I'm looking forward to going through this. Um, thanks for coming along and doing this, Sean. I really appreciate it. No, no, cheers for having me. It's been it's been a great three weeks, to be honest. Like getting to getting to know you and getting to know the, the, the sort of the platform and seeing how the boys have engaged with it. It's been um, it's been really eye opening. Um, I know we've we've sort of briefly spoken about it before we start recording, but the, I guess the stuff that we sort of spoke about with the boys that we wanted to address was how can we use this time to get better um we it actually came from one of our one of the lads who's going to be coming back next year just saying look there's going to be the, the difference when we come back in september between who's going to do well and who's who's not will be the teams that have, have taken this time and really benefited from it um and have found ways to improve um and I guess at the time it was sort of a week or two into lockdown. I was there thinking, right, I've just got to keep them fit. We don't know how long this is going to go on for, and then we'll be. A, but he was already looking a lot further ahead, so it was like, okay, I think I probably need to get on the same page here. So we started yeah. looking at ways that we can we can sort of up the boys' um, involvement off field. Um, and at this time of year, it's I guess I, I wouldn't see them a huge amount in the summer term. Um, just seeing them in the gym once a week or whatever, and then just keep tra- tabs on them. If we're getting ready for a summer tour, which was last year, we'd we'd probably see them a bit more towards the end of the term. But um, we we thought, right, how can we do this? So we, the initial idea was we'd, we'd sort of catch up with them every Wednesday afternoon in what would be their senior games afternoon, and we'd have a a little webinar of some kind. And in the first couple of weeks, I I did one on nutrition at the, at the moment and staying active, and um, and then I set them some some challenges, and they started going away using uh, a previous video platform that we used where we started looking at. Um, them just sort of clipping together bits and pieces and we'd been lucky that a guy had previously um, clipped to get like used sports code to put some of our stuff together on there so it was easy for the guys that um, did it they went away and clipped together all of our lineups from last season both attack and defense and they put them into two two playlists and and sent them across to me and they they made little comments on on the on them and then they put together a presentation that they then delivered to the boys on areas we can improve and I was like, this is really cool. Like you, you're in the lower sick, you're coming back next year. You, you, you want to get better. And to give, I guess to give a bit of context, the, the guys in our lower sick about to go to the upper sick. They're, they've, they've had a pretty, pretty good school sort of career. They got to the, the NatWest Cup semi-finals as under 15s. They've, they've been relatively, we've had a few of them playing sort of in the first team when they were under 16s. Um, and then they were a big chunk of the team this year. So they, and they we lost in the semi-final of the Champions Trophy this year. So they were, they're, they're determined to sort of go on better, if you like, and make sure that their, their last year is going to be really, really cool. And um, so they, they, they took this on and I was like, right, wow, let's they, they, find ways to, to sort of up this. So first thing we did was um, Andy Beatty there in the bottom right, who's a member of staff at the school, played for Bath a lot of times. Um, he got on the phone and got Dave Atwood to come and join us on a webinar, on a, on a Teams call. Um, and Dave was brilliant. Um, he, he came on and he spoke to the boys for an hour and a half um, about line outs, scrums, malls, a little bit of dark art stuff, which Dave in the top left there, that's a different Dave in the top left there, he's a prop, was sort of, he was loving that. So, okay, well, these are little bits that we can do to, to, to get a bit of an advantage. But also just shared with the boys, like this is what Bristol have been doing in, because he's now at Bristol, what Bristol have been doing in, in lockdown and, and the ways they've been improving. and. It's from silly things like how long can you balance a pint of water on your back in a bear crawl position? Yeah, and to dropping on like taking off sofa cushions and putting them out in the garden as tackle like suits that they drop on and bounce up to work on their speed off the ground. And and it just got the guys thinking about well, how can we do extra bits and pieces? Um, and it was it was awesome for him to to come and give us that time. And it, you know, it was great fun. Yeah, obviously the boys liked the little stories that he had from playing with with Mr. Beatty when they were together at school uh, at, at Bath, I should say. Um, and then we're like, okay, well, the forwards have had their opportunity. We now need to, to look at other ways we can do this. And we now need to think about how can we get the boys more involved? And that's when I got in touch with you um, and said, look, we're, 
we've looked at various bits and pieces and, and we're quite excited about the possibility of, of what Coach Roger can do. And I've spoken to some, some guys at other schools and we had a great chat and that was it. I was, I was like, this, this is the way that we're going to get the boys involved. Um, so we started out initially just putting a couple of games on there. I think there, there were actually two games on there already from so on our account from games. Uh, I think we'd played Tunbridge and Uppingham this year, um, both in the Champions Trophy. Um, and so we were like, right, there's two games for the boys to go and have a play with. And so, yeah, just jumping in, I guess yeah. worth mentioning that we, we, we did this um, we, with schools because we've got a lot of schools on the platform already. It was trying to connect those schools up so that, you know, if, if yourselves came along, you would already have content there for you to use from other schools that were utilizing the platform. And it, it was one of these things we did and, it, and I didn't know it would like work out. As in, I just thought it's a cool thing to do. Never ever happens, you know. It's a good starting point. I didn't think, oh, you know, COVID will come along and there'll be no games, and it'll be really cool to have some stuff from the previous season. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, so it, in that respect, it's it's worked out beyond that I thought. But it was great that I guess from your point of view that you could go straight in and you've already got games there from the season to to work with. Yeah, and that, it, that made a, a big big difference because it, it meant the boys could just jump straight into it. Um, so I spent a very small amount of time with them um, with a few of them coming up initially with what would our sort of key parameters be for, for setting up clips. And I went away and, and built those and then um, put them on there and then showed them how to do it and put the first few examples in and um, gave them a little bit of instruction on that. And then they just kind of went away and, and started cracking on with it. And I think um, this is, so it's the, I think they've, so far in this game, they've clipped the first half. Um, and they've done that as a as a sort of collaborative thing online where they've been chatting as they've done it, which is quite cool. Um, and it's it's looking at okay, how can we how could we have done better? I mean, I think both the games that were on there, we we'd been lucky enough to or we played well enough to have won, so it helped. And but what was great is the ways that instantly boys are sort of coming up with various ideas. This is we need to do this better. We need to do that better. And the thing that came out of it was okay, well we've just got to find ways to improve. So we started, um, the boys started putting together playlists and we gave, um, I gave each like different groups areas of responsibility Yeah. and they had to go away and look at it. So the line out guys were given a little bit more, okay, well now that you've done this stuff with Dave and, and um, with the stuff we learned from him, how can we now go look at the line out a little bit more deeply um, rather than was it successful or, or a failure? And, and so they've started doing that, which is quite cool. We started looking at, why we score tries and how we score tries. So group has started looking at that. Um, how we can be more productive when we're getting into the, the bottom end of the field and we're, and we're starting to look like we're going to score. Um, and then one of the big things that came out of it was we're, we're quite good ball in hand and we, we score. And if, I guess if you watched our highlights, you'd be like, all right, they, they, they do some good stuff. But we're actually identified that we could be a lot more efficient and we were maybe missing out on quite a lot of chances where we were just sort of almost resorting to type and uh, or reverting to type. And so it was like, okay, well, how do we get better at the attack side of things? Because we, I guess we were sort of to and fro and we've got a couple of guys with different premiership academies and they've got, this is how we'd like to do it. This is how we'd like to do it. Um, and so we were like, okay, well, let's, let, let's see if we can get a fresh pair of eyes look at it. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll come on to that in a bit, but yeah. I guess the other thing it's enabled us to do is to get some of the younger guys coming in. So this is um, our under 16s from last season. Um, so guys that are about to go up and play their first year in the in the sort of the senior team. Most of them, one or two of them, have had a, a small taste of it, but um, most of these guys will be sort of coming up into that senior setup now next year. And so they started looking at their first real taste of analysis. Like we'll, we'll have done video stuff with them before, where we'll have put, we'll have put together some clips and sort of talked through various bits and pieces. But this was the first opportunity for them to do it. And I guess that's the big difference for us was this is them taking ownership of this, not me putting a bunch of clips together that maybe don't have much meaning for them. It was actually them looking at it. Um, so yeah, the big... I was going to say, Sean, just on that, like, yeah, I was, how much has been the players? There are obviously, there's lots of clips there. Are you saying like 100% is those guys? Have you been adding bits and pieces yourself? What would be the percentage you to them? Uh, so this is probably so I I showed I went through the first maybe 15 20 minutes of the game with the guys 
in a in a um a teams meeting we had um and i so i probably clipped together the first 15 20 and sort of showed them this is because that way we'd have lots of different examples of stuff so that they could go away the rest so again i think they've done to just over half half time with this um yeah. and we've kind of given them a bit of a break in the moment because we're coming up to exam season like we're, we're still going to do our internal assessments um so these guys uh the, the guys that would have been doing their gcse's they're actually they were given a bit of time off um and now they're doing some bridging courses from gcse to a level because they're not doing their exams um mm. so that's quite cool for them but they they actually approached me and said and i think it was maybe a week and a half before half term and said we're really enjoying listening to and watching the the games from last season have you still got some of the footage from our games and could we have a go at doing this with with us as players i was like yeah cool let's let's have a crack and that's why this idea came up with uh we came up with this idea I mean, it blew my mind when you look at the scrum clips there, just how many scrums there were in the first half. Um, <laughs> I was like, hang on, this, this can't be normal. Have I missed something here? We, um, when you watch it back, it's just a little bit of some interesting management from the, from the guy in the, in the odd coloured shirt. Um, but also, um, just both teams just had an off day. I think there were two quite good teams that got stuck into each other and they just, there were a lot of, it was a really wet, horrible day and they just made a lot of errors. But, I was, I was there thinking I've got to completely relook at what I'm expecting under 16 rugby to look like if there's 18 scrums in the first half. Um, and then when I watched another game and there was five, I was like, okay, that's all right. I feel a bit better about myself. Um, Cause I was thinking, crikey, I've, I've obviously not got any yeah, idea. Like yeah. Game understanding of, an under, of under 16 rugby. Apparently I've just completely and utterly bypassed. So, but no, it was, it was just a, an odd one. Um, but I think they were, they, yeah, again, playing on the first team pitch down at Seaford, it was a big old pitch. They were, you can see there was eight line outs in that first half, 18 scrums. Probably. Yeah. Um, but no, they, 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 they really bought into it. They, they really enjoyed that session as well. I think they, they maybe hadn't been given that opportunity to, to start to look at the game in that more in-depth way. They'd sort of just seen a, and it, it's definitely refreshed my way of looking at a bit of analysis as well, because we've maybe gone right here's two or three attack examples two or three transition examples a bit of set piece and then here's some defense and this is yeah. stuff you're doing well this is stuff you're not doing so well what it maybe didn't then do is allow the players to actually at this age especially look at the what they're doing off the ball and what their um what their what their sort of impact is in the game when they're not sort of directly involved and those extra little bits and okay, well, this is where the spacing is and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's really helped their, their side of it, um, I hope. Yeah, <laughs> I've got no, I mean, I say that, they, they, they seem to be bought into it. If it's going to make any difference to how they play, we'll, we've got a long time before we probably un understand that. But Yeah, I was going to say on, on, on all that, my, I guess we've been doing this for a bit now within schools. So the key things for, for me when I'm looking at this is that you're allowing the players to be content creators and, and they're used to being that. Like their world is they create video, they push video out. It's their their content. Um, so us chucking yeah. them stuff isn't really their world. Um, no. And they learn from they learn from video all the time. Like, but they have to be the ones who source it. Like, again, it's not about them learning from something they get given. It's about them searching and finding and exploring and, and making their mind up and having discussions. So the, the, the scrum thing is really valuable in this this example for me is because that scrum in a game context of a, a, an hour, maybe 35 minutes each way, maybe um, at 70 minutes, that's really off-putting for someone watching the game if it's a whole game. Yeah. So it's like 18 scrums. At which scrum is the person going to say, I had enough of this, I'm not watching any more of this game? Whereas yeah. they can bypass those moments. If it's, if it's a fullback or someone that's as far away from the scrum as you, you, you want, they can just go, right, I'm interested in attack. I'm interested in checking out some line breaks. I'm interested in tech, checking out some defensive moments. And they don't yeah. have to look at that downtime in the scrum. Whereas your props can get excited and go, 18 scrums, amazing. Um, yeah. Or props react to that kind of thing. Well, um, yeah, or well, maybe the opposite. I'm, I'm, I'm fed up <laughs> with scrummaging. Um, but no, it, you're right. It's It's been really interesting to see just how quickly the boys have, have grabbed it. Um, much more quickly than I would have done. Um, and they they've really bought into it and it's it's great to see because it i guess at the moment they the rugby season probably 
even more so than it would normally at this time of year. It will seem an awfully long way off um, for them. And I think the, and I, I guess a lot of other schools will be facing this challenge across the country is well, we're hoping come September or October, there's going to be something that we can, we can do with these guys. That's going to, that's going to really um, keep them invested. And if this is the first sort of steps to that, then that's great because it's, it's keeping them buying in at a time when maybe, I mean, realistically at this time of year, they'd be off playing cricket, they'd be playing tennis, they'd be doing athletics and um, competing for the school in other ways. And I, like I said, I'd be catching up with them once a week with the, with some of the, the senior players and the leaders and the guys that are involved with the academies. I'd be, we'd maybe catch up a little bit more often because they're, they're naturally, I think that probably the reason they've got to that stage is they're a bit more inquisitive and they'd want to come and see me and, they, and just bump into the corridors for little chats and stuff. So that's normal. And this is the this is replacing that, but actually, I think it could be. I'm hoping it could be the something we do a lot more in the future. At this time of year, we start to sort of debrief and review the previous season and start to build for the new season with those guys. And it's been a great, it's been a really cool tool to to use with them so far. Um, but yeah, the, I guess the like I said, the big thing that came out of it was that we want to look at some areas of our game, and then the boys started then getting stuck into the feed. Um, which has been good. Um, we've we've found ways that the boys have been sticking on little videos of themselves, um, doing little skills challenges and um, just skill work on. So both Jesper and Jamie, are, and well, Jesper, Jamie and Tim, the three lads that have, have sort of put stuff on there, they're, they're all, um, sort of, they're, they're going to be coming back next year as um, into the upper sixth, having played this season as actually our 10, 12 and 13. So they're, they're, they're buying into it. But, Again, it's we we we've maybe had to find ways just to drag them onto it at first because it is new. So Robin Hardman, who's who's one of our coaches there, he he shared that he'd gone out for a run, and if any of them could beat his time, they could have a bit of vintage stash left over from a member of staff from a few years ago, who actually coached all these guys. And so and so they'll have recognised some. And he was at he like he was at the school for a long time, so there's some pretty old bits of kit knocking around, <laughs> and the boys love all that vintage kit. So. He said, anyone that can run it in, in under this time, that's 90K. And the boys are like, what about if we're not 90K? Yeah. So now they're investing in weight. They, well, they're going out and one of them's got a backpack on. One of them's done it in a weights vest. You can yeah. see from Tim there, I think if you can read it, he ended up lugging around two five kg weight like plates in his hand. <laughs> so he's just run 6K carrying two five kg plates. And it's like, this is really cool. It's just ways for the boys just to do something a bit different. Just to challenge themselves. Um, yeah, but then being able to share the resources like the SNC program and stuff on there has helped as well, just to get the boys using it initially. I was I pushed it quite hard at first, just get a few things on there, get them buying into it, making sure I was commenting on it. Um, but then we've been able to share like the playlists and stuff. And so we started putting together some attack playlists and the boys are like, We've had Dave Atwood, can we get a like can we get someone else on for the backs, please? Um so I was like, okay, who, who can we who can we ask? And I mean, it's it's difficult because the guy that we end, ultimately ended up asking is an old Hamptonian, and he's um, let's just say we will Simon out quite a lot. Um, he's done a he's done a prize giving. He's done various other bits and pieces. I've been lucky because he's the the um, Lensbury where the England Sevens guy is trained. Who Simon obviously coached for, um, or he's still coaching actually, but worked with for quite a long time is just down the road um, and so whenever they were getting ready for Vegas or Vancouver with the artificial pitches they'd come because we've got a, a 3G pitch it's cool. yeah. he'd bring them down to train on that so they could get used to it and the climate and then during the winter when the lens was frozen or flooded he'd bring them over so yeah. I got to know him quite well um, but they, they, I guess the deal breaker was that Andy, again Andy who I mentioned earlier Andy Beattie and him were in the same school team together cool. and so Andy just rang him and said side so you fancy coming and joining us and I was like well if we're going to talk about attack I guess the England attack coach isn't the worst person you can you can ask to, to do you a favor so someone came and joined us for afternoon he came on I'd sent him some clips in advance so I was able to use coach object to put together some clips um from attack I sent him that playlist he watched it he then came back in um and he basically just watched a few clips with us and um, we're sort of saying, guys, I'm noticing this. Have you, have you seen that? This is something I'd be, I'd, 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 I'd ask you to think about. Um, and just spoke to the lads, and then they, they'd ask him questions. He'd, he'd ask them questions, which was really cool. He was sort of asking them, so what are you, 
what were you seeing here? What was your decision? What was your thought process here? It was quite complimentary on some of the stuff, which the boys obviously were going away buzzing about. Um, and he was, yeah, it was just a great afternoon of sharing ideas and the boys have now gone away and they've gone, right, okay, so these are the, the things that we talked about. We're now going to try and address address them and look at them in different ways. Um, so we're looking at um, creating transition rather than just accepting it. Um, we're looking at um, attacking space early, like various things. So the boys have come up with four or five categories and they've split themselves off into little groups. Um, yeah. And I've not done any of that, which is quite, it's quite cool and refreshing. I've had to maybe just sort of nudge them, a, like, why are we putting all our decision makers in the same group? Let's maybe think about splitting that up a bit. But once they did, once they got that idea, they, um, they really bought into it. And it's been, it's been a really cool sort of tool to be able to use for the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, and it's quite exciting to think what we might be able to do with it next half term. Yeah, I think um, that getting getting someone like Simon on is is class. Like that that's no content you've got on that platform. I, I think I've, I was mentioning this just before we jumped on. Where like that's on the platform now. You can always go to that webinar as, as well, and in that Teams meeting, clip it up, and then send that as a reminder to the boys, and then set a task or something. You know, here's what we discussed with Simon during this, and bang. Another yeah. part. Of, I thought it would be really cool is, and this is maybe too, too much of a stretch for, for Simon, or, but is can you get others to commit to um, supporting during the season? So, like, instead of it being your voice all the time, if the boys are going to clip up the game, could you invite someone on to go and do a bit of a guest, you know, analysis? They just come on, they, they pick out a few lineouts or a few scrums, if that's their forte, and they send it out to the boys and they have this kind of dialogue with, with, a, with a, an alumni or um, just yeah really that would cool. that would that would be really cool um the, actually one of the first things the boys came up with once we spoke to, to Dave Atwood because he'd mentioned that they've got as soon as they went into lockdown they were like right we've got our normal social whatsapp group we need to do a let's keep ourselves training whatsapp group as well and so they put together a skills training whatsapp group and the boys are like right we've got to do that we've got to we've got to get a way of doing that can we invite Dave <laughs> and I was like uh I don't think you'll necessarily want to be in a WhatsApp group with you guys, um, but maybe we can maybe we can get him to come and, and look at something in the future. Um, so yeah, that would be cool. I mean, Simon was kind enough to sort of say, because I mean he lives around the corner from school, so I might pop in next season and come and actually have a look at a proper session because it's all well and good watching clips of a game, but actually seeing how you train and how, what you're looking for and talking to you when you're looking at these problems would be a, a much cooler way of doing it. So yeah. I think it's. It's definitely, hopefully it's a bit of a foot in the door there, but yeah, being able to do the, the, the two things and get these guys to come and sort of maybe look at a bit of analysis would be quite a cool way of doing it. Um, just who, who's going to give up that time? Um, well, I think there's people. a couple of players out there, I know this because we, we invited a couple onto our platform, they're wanting to step into coaching. So actually, yeah. you know, them starting to maybe step into that remotely is much easier for them because... Yeah, we don't know what their training is going to be like the week after a game because they might have done really well in the game and therefore they went right have the Monday off or the Monday they were expecting off the Wednesday they were expecting off is now the hardest session of the week because they <laughs> stuffed up so it's hard to commit to, yeah. a, to a program but it's easy to say oh, I can give up a couple of hours and just look at what you guys are doing and engage remotely with the players and it gets them a feel for maybe that coaching environment so yeah I think you'd be It'd be a cool thing to reach out. I think the players would get a lot from it as well as you guys as a as a school. Yeah. Well, anyone anyone that watches this, if they if they're keen, give us a shout. Yeah. Um, give, give, and also, yeah, exactly. If if you're uh, give give Sean a shout at Hampton, that's a good good shout out, and uh, or get in touch with your old schools and uh, as well. That'd yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. Good. Definitely. I mean, it's I think it's it's just really good to have a different pair of eyes look at something, and the boys really appreciate that different voice as well. Um. I mean, Simon and I had a conversation afterwards, and he was like, "I hope that was okay. Like, I hope I did. I hope I did what you wanted." And I'm there, like, "Yeah, it was really cool." Um, yeah. But he also said, "I mean, hopefully it wasn't anything that just the boys didn't understand at all." And I was like, "Look, it, there was no massive reinvention of the game of rugby in that conversation. Yeah, yeah. It was just looking at it from a slightly different lens and looking, and maybe just getting the boys to to see pictures a little bit differently." And with that slightly different voice, it just really, it just helps them buy in and engage to that because 
they do spend a lot of time with with me and and with the other coaches and so to to get that other person in the same way that when we go on cpd and all that all the webinars we're doing now i mean it, you want to you want to hear different voices you want to see different but you want to get different ideas and just pick those little bits and then see how you can whether or not they align with what you're trying to achieve or, or whether actually they they go com- a little bit against what you're trying to do and so you want to look at something else but no, it's been it's been a great way to get the boys to buy into it. I'm looking forward to what we're going to try and do next half term with the with the junior year groups. Yeah, yeah. just trying to. I'm I'm very much uh, magpieing this from um, from Goldie. I think who you've been doing some stuff with with Abingdon as well. I know he's been getting his junior year groups to do some stuff. It's all about on social media, and so I'm stealing that idea. Goldie and I went to school together, so hopefully he won't uh, oh, okay. enjoy it, tell me off. Nice. Yeah, he was my, he was my captain at school. So when I was oh, really? I was a little fifth year, and he was in the upper sixth. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, we've we've we've. When he was at Fisher, we played. We were we went against each other a few times, and um, yeah, he's he's a great guy. So I'm definitely yeah. stealing that idea off him, and I'm not even going to start to pretend I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm chatting to him tomorrow. Actually, I've got um, similar things set up because I, I guess I've seen kind of what he was up to on his platform, and I just want to yeah. get his well, understanding that there's lots that's still possible, even though we have yeah. that, and actually. Maybe it'll change the way you approach things for the better. Maybe it'll get us to take a deeper dive into the, the players' world because, you know, they're, they're online a lot anyway. We've kind of all come online because of the situation, but their yeah. world kind of already existed there. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think that's been, that, that's been made really evident to me once. Obviously, new thing. They're always a little bit hesitant at first because they're like, how does this work? What are we trying to do with this? It's still a school setting. And yeah. so there's always that you you just got to make sure they're getting it right at first because how they talk to each other on social media and online and stuff might be a little bit different to how we'd want them to engage in a school platform. But they once they get it and they they understand what it's there for and how much it can help, it's made a yeah. That, well, like I said, we we haven't seen any real results yet because we're not chucking a ball around it. But in terms of their understanding of the game. Yeah. already the way they're starting to talk about it and what, how they're talking to each other and what they're starting to reject, you can see little bits of sinking in here. Yeah. And if that, I guess that's probably one of the hardest things to, to coach at times is that understanding of the problems that you're facing in front of you and how you're going to solve them. And so if they do, if this is a way that they can really buy into that, then that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, you're infusing them. You're, you're keeping them enthused about the game and yeah. you know, Christmas, Christmas only happens once a year, but, we get pretty excited before it, and um, you know the yeah. rugby's the rugby's because because we're marketed by all the big American companies probably. But um, but but we are. Um, I guess the job as coaches just now it hasn't changed too much. It's still still to enthuse your players about the game. The yeah. challenge is that you might not be able to do it as much with the physicality, the training. The you've got to yeah. try and think of different ways, and and it's to make sure that when they do return, because they will. Um, you haven't had a massive drop off. It's, it's been great. I mean, I, th- I guess maybe having this time at the moment is, has allowed me to do that as well, though, because I've really been able to just sort of dive into it. Um, maybe if if this had been September and we'd started then, being able to sit down and actually go through all the funny details and think, okay, how can we use that? Having that time would maybe have been a bit trickier. Um, so I guess, I mean, I, I'm trying to look for for all the positives that are coming out of the situation we're in at the moment, and this is definitely going to be one of them. Yeah. Um, just getting the boys involved in it this way and looking at the game because I guess a school like ours there's a lot of our lads not it won't be the guys that are playing in the first team and it won't be many of the guys that play in the A teams but the guys that are maybe playing lower down the school and a little bit younger they play because they get a choice um, our, our lads get a choice whether they're going to play rugby play football go rowing um, play tennis They, they, they those sports kind of run all year um, well sorry, for the first two terms, and then cricket and athletics and tennis in the summer term. And, um, and so some of the boys we, we, we will have playing rugby don't want to row or don't want to play football and they want to try something different and they come and play rugby or maybe their dad played rugby and he's encouraging them to do it. And so we'll only have sort of 35, 40 boys a year playing. And if 50% of them regularly watch rugby, I'd be surprised. Yeah, I think less and less, and I know that I've, I've seen sort of, and heard Various people, I think Eddie Jones even mentioned it recently, like very much YouTube generation. They'll go watch little highlights. They'll see, they won't watch a whole game of rugby. And so getting them to look at it like this is, 
for some of them it's completely and utterly alien it's very new yeah. um but it's making them look at hopefully something they're more interested in because i'll sit and watch i mean the um the will green with brian ashton thing yesterday was really cool and you're watching the the, the england schoolboys game and you're like yeah that's kind of cool some great skills but even i wasn't as invested in that i was more interested in listening to what they had to say than the actual rugby yeah um and then you watch the england new zealand stuff and you're like yeah really cool but at the same time, I know the boys, when you're watching yourself and you're able to look at how you're performing and what you're doing in it and start to analyse yourself in the same way that the guys were doing last night on that, it, it, it's yeah. massively more powerful. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that when the younger guys get a chance to do it and see, and initially it might just be a couple of, because we haven't got any footage of, say, the under-13s or under-14s um, from this season. We'll have, we might have videoed one or two of those games, but it'll be just to give them an, a, an opportunity to play more than anything else. Yeah. They... Yeah. But they'll be going, okay, well, this is what a first-team player does. This is what we're trying to get to in two or three or four years' time. Whereas trying to play like Tom Curry or Manu Tuolangi, that it's well and good. And that's what we dream about as kids. We, we dream about going out in the back garden and, and playing like them. But at the set, this is a very achievable goal for them, for all of them. Um, so that's quite a cool way of getting them to buy in that this is, this is what you could be doing in a couple of years. And then the guys that at the moment are probably looking at it going, okay, so all those little skills and stuff that Mr. Thompson's banging on at me to do in the back garden at the moment, if they help me do, do this better or to get into this team, then that's, that's really, really powerful, I think. Because, like you said, we, we will get back to playing rugby and hopefully it will, it will look quite similar to this. Some interesting stuff come up from World Rugby this morning on some of the little law changes, but we'll see. Have you seen those? No, I've not seen them, mate. I'm not, I'm not managed to. So no more scrum resets. So what happens? Free kick. Yeah. So, oh, um, so we're back on track now. Um, what what I've done is I've I'll have edited the last uh, twenty minutes because me and Sean just <laughs> jumped onto some of the world rugby uh, uh, law changes, uh, and which led into how the whole of world rugby should be uh, changed. <laughs> so that's probably a whole new bit of content we can chuck out. Um, but now we won't. Um, but back on, I guess, back on track with um, with this is um, again. Thanks again, Sean, for for jumping on this and uh, for showing us how you've been using the platform. Um, I really appreciate the time you've given up today, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how you you crack on in the future. Because um, it's been a great. Uh, it's, it's been great. It's great to catch up. Um, like I said, it's it's been a great. It's really interesting three weeks. Just sort of seeing how the boys have picked it up so quickly. Um, to be honest, I'm quite excited to see how they're going to use it going forward um i mean i can I, I i now know what it can do um like within various bits and pieces i'm quite excited to see how they're going to use that to to improve themselves but also just to hopefully improve everything that we're doing with the rugby at the school um and yeah it's, it's just quite a cool, cool thing for them to have at the moment with the with everything else that's going on yeah no I definitely couldn't agree more with that mate um Thanks again, and um, well, I'm sure we'll 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 be in touch. Uh, so I'll catch you next time. Okay. Awesome. Cheers, Mark.